our methodology is very important. It is a, a tool very important. So, because uh, what happened when uh, we we play, or what uh, what did happen now uh, when we play? No, this uh, easy a simple game. Ahora hablo castellano sí, porque sí, mi inglés sí. <laughs> eh, se ha creado una complicidad. You just generate. You just created a complicity. Se ha creado una intimidad. You created a, a sense of intimacy. Entre personas que se han visto todo el día, pero quizá nunca han hablado en estas horas del primer beso. And and you created it between people that you've seen all day. But never discuss your first kiss with. <laughs> Hemos uh, asumido nuevas reglas. We assume new rules. Entonces nos hemos puesto en riesgo. So we put ourselves at risk. <coughs> y en este riesgo, en nuestro cuerpo estaba uh, atento, vivo, curioso. And that risk put our bodies in a in a place that where it was attentive, curious. Y además, uh, mientras hemos jugado, um, hemos compartido un imaginario. And while we were playing, we also shared an imaginary, an imagination. Éramos todos en un barco y teníamos que salvarnos. We were all in a boat and we had to save ourselves. Entonces, por algunos minutos, este espacio se ha vuelto un barco con agua. So for a few minutes, this space turned into a boat with water in it. Y nosotros mismos nos hemos transformados. And we ourselves are transformed. Eh, podemos decir que, que el juego crea un imaginario. We can say that the game itself uh, creates an imaginary. Y este imaginario es el terreno para crear una experiencia. And that, uh, that imaginary is, is used to create a, a, an experience. Uh, nosotros somos una compañía, nos llamamos Teatro de los Sentidos, no solo nosotros dos, pero muchos más, somos muchos más. We're a company called the Theater of the Senses, not just us two, but many more of us. Y nuestras obras no son obras clásicas con uh, un escenario y una platea. And our works are not classical works uh, like on a scene, on a stage, and, and you know, with a set. Creamos para nuestros espectadores experiencias. We create experiences for our spectators, our audiences. Donde los actores y los espectadores comparten un mismo espacio. Experiences where the spectators and the actors share a, the same space. Un mismo imaginario. The same imaginary. Entonces los actores en realidad los llamamos habitantes de un lugar. So the, the spectators, we consider them... La, los, uh, los actores... The actors, sorry. Uh, the actors, uh, we consider them uh, inhabitants of a specific place. Eh, los espectadores son los viajeros que vienen a visitar este espacio. And the spectators are the travelers that come to visit this space. Eh, a través de una experiencia lúdica sensorial through a uh, sensory and um, ludic or uh, uh, play experience. Los, uh, uh, los, habitante, uh, los habitantes y los uh, viajeros uh, participan a un mismo juego. So through this experience, uh, the residents and the travelers uh, participate in the same game. No hay actuación, entre comillas. There's not a performance, uh, quote unquote, a per performance. Porque si estuviera actuación, el nuestro espectador estaría pasivo. Because if there was a performance, then our spectators would be passive, they'd be watching it. No estaría con el cuerpo vivo y listo para vivir esta experiencia. They wouldn't have their bodies alive and ready to live this experience. No hay distancia entre uh, el habitante y el viajero. There's no, uh, there's no distance between the navigator and the voyager. In tanto, tanto. Um, when we use these tools, we, uh, the, la mitad, <laughs> half, half of it, 
half, the half, say, is to create a resonance. Una resonancia. To create resonance. Okay. Nuestra meta es crear una resonancia. Oh, okay. Our our objective is to create to create resonance. Okay. Okay. So we we try through the game to create an imaginary, and in this imaginary we try to create a sensorial experience that we would with the intention that this experience uh, can transform a little bit the one who's living it. Okay. So uh, this resonance is like. If the person who lived the experience say, mm, I recognize myself in this, uh, this is also mine, you know? Because through the other, you can recognize yourself. Like when you listen to a tale, a story, you recognize yourself through another character. So we try to play with these tools. Because, in fact, to create this resonance, we need to touch uh, the memory of the person, the personal memory from the experiential memory, and the collective one. Uh, we use senses, so we play with uh, smells, uh, sounds, uh, tactile, tact, touch, uh, with, with, the, with the, all the senses. Uh, to to evocate and to to create a story. Uh, we like we could say that we uh, write like a score, a sensorial score, okay, uh, for all these uh, senses to to create and sometimes to accompany. It depends. Uh, the dramaturgical uh, line that we want to develop. Lo que nos planteamos con uh, los cinco senti con los sentidos es que nosotros no tenemos cinco sentidos, pero uno con muchas ventanitas. So what we propose is that uh, we don't, rather than having five uh, senses, we have one sense with several windows. Mm -hmm. Y está la sinestesia entre los sentidos, esta compenetración eh, entre los sentidos. And the synesthesia between the, between the senses, this, this sort of mingling between the, the senses. Permite eh, a la imaginación de fluir. Allows the imagination to flow. Porque las posibilidades de nuestro de nuestros sentidos para conocer el mundo para para vivir una experiencia eh, es grandísima because the ability of our of our senses to to experience the world um, I mean it's enormous the potential for it is enormous porque a través de la sinestesia nosotros podemos por ejemplo tocar para escuchar because through synesthesia we can touch to listen o oler para ver or smell to see o al revés ver para oler or the other way around to see to smell y claramente para que el cuerpo uh, pueda uh, <coughs> pueda sentir con todos los sentidos durante estas experiencias and so clearly for the body to be able to see uh, with all the senses through these experiences. <coughs> Creamos algunas condiciones. We create certain conditions. Porque normalmente en nuestra vida estamos acostumbrados a conocer el mundo a través de la vista. Because normally in, in, in our lives we're used to uh, understanding the world through sight, through our vision. Eh, vivimos bajo la dictadura del visual. We live under the dictator dictatorship of the visual. Entonces, en nuestras obras, es como que intentamos que la gente pueda eh, volver a descubrir eh, qué significa tener todos los sentidos bien abiertos. 
so through these uh, these experiences, we we try to you know remind people and have them uh, feel once again uh, what it is to feel through all of these senses. Y qué pasa cuando los tenemos bien abiertos? And what happens when we have them uh, well open, you know, open? Entonces, una de las condiciones, por ejemplo, es bajar todos los volúmenes de la luz, del sonido, del de estímulo olfativo. So one of the things that, that we like to do is to lower the lights, lower the sound, lower, lower all of the stimulus, as even like the olfactory ones. Uh, we use, uh, we try to use subtle, subtle in, inputs, inputs, yeah, inputs, and um, to suggest and not to show, because it permit, permit, to the imagination to be uh, free, to as many possibilities. So it's it can create a question and a curiosity. And in another way, is more creative for the one who live experience because, in fact, he, he, he got to work because he got to create his own history, his own version of the story, of the experience he's living. Um, but okay, we will close. Uh, just um, we talk a little bit about no, uh, our area. Just quickly, she worked with the smell in the theater, and I work with the sounds. So you speak. Uh, sí. Solo quería decir que lo utilizo, por ejemplo, del, del olfato. Pa, podemos decir para todos los sentidos es que no lo utilizamos en una manera descriptiva. Si yo tengo que crear un, uh, un uh, olor por uh, un imaginario de, de taller de mecánico. So uh, one of the th all I wanted to say was that so with work, when you're working with smell, uh, we, we, you know, you, it's hard to work with smell in a descriptive sense. So if I wanted to work on smell uh, on, of, a, of a mechanics workshop, for instance. Eh, puede ser que si ya el imaginario es muy potente, eh, prefiero como elegir un olor que eh, da más carácter al personaje que está viviendo en este imaginario. So, so if I'm thinking about that workshop, um, I, it, it's a very powerful sort of image and it, it is already quite evocative. So I would rather uh, work with something that suggests more about the character. Mm. Lo utilizo de, de los sentidos no es literal. I, I use the sense in a non-literal sense. Um, another aspect, because each language has his own rules. Uh, for example, in the sound, you were earlier yeah, speaking about the, the soundscapes. Uh, it's so interesting. Uh, so interesting. Uh, in uh, the theater, we use these too, but uh, it's we used to work uh, around the, c the city, for example. But there's always. A, uh, a point again to choose which one uh, are the points which are the city without be folkloric in a folkloric aspect which don't have many interest and we don't have uh, we don't open really a, a, a door in the imaginary imaginary so we got to make this choice there are these are subjective choice but with little rules I don't. We, I won't give an example because we don't have time. <laughs> uh, no, just to say that sometimes uh, to use uh, a soundscape about a city in concrete uh, Naples, 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 Naples. 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 Um, I use a sound of another city. Um, it was just a try, okay, but. Um, in fact, it functions as well because it defines uh, what we want, we were, what we were searching for. In in uh, is contrary. It defined because it was not. It defined like the shape of this, like a silhouette, the silhouette, yeah. okay. like a silhouette. But it was not the city. But people in this listen to it, recognize themselves. Curious because but it was not the same city they were living in. But maybe in this intersection in the city they are living in and in this which is are not the same 
uh, there's a small intersection where there's something universal. Maybe. Un'ultimissima cosa. Queremos uh, terminar con una frase de un arquitecto que no sé, quizá lo, lo, ya lo, conéis, lo conocéis, ¿no? Eh, Payasma, visto que la vuestra búsqueda es sobre la ciudad, sobre los sentidos y también el poder, nos parecía que esta frase podía ser muy interesante porque el trabajo sobre los sentidos no es solo poético, pero es también muy político y él lo explica muy bien. So, so as a um, as a kind of final, finalissimo point, um, uh, we'd just like to quote uh, Palasma, um, an architect who works on on topics quite similar to what we're dealing with here, and uh, and his quote is. Uh, so a culture that tries to control uh, its citizens is, uh, is probably going to uh, promote the opposite direction of the interaction. Um, it will distance itself from the intimate individuality and the identification and identification towards a um, distant and public uh, un, un, uh, shedding, let's say. Um, a surveillance society is necessarily a society uh, of, of, the, of the voyeur and of a sadist's eye. An efficient form of mental torture is the continued use of a high level of lighting that does not leave a lot of space for uh, mental um, disengagement uh, or for privacy. In fact, uh, it even lends it, uh, leaves one uh, exposed and um, and it violates the uh, in the dark interiority of the self thank you